<laughs> I've been looking forward to this project for quite some time now. What we're going to do in this video is divide my Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia into two pieces. That is the plan. I only want two. I don't need this orchid falling apart on me. However, before we get into the nitty gritty, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad you're up for it. I am going to be going step by step with you as to how I go about it to hopefully do the least amount of root destruction. <laughs> Always a good idea. And share some pointers with you that should you want to do something similar with one of your orchids, that this video will help you out and guide you through the process, make it fun and not something to be afraid of. First, we need to get a clear visual of what we are up against. Apart from the fact that we have an extremely vigorous orchid, she needs a repot anyway, but instead of bumping her up a pot larger, we're just going to divide her. So we need a clear visual of what we are going to do. Secondly, we want an orchid that is big enough that will give us at least three structures and if possible, a new growth on the way to divide and create a healthy division. So, so far, we've got a very vigorous orchid. She's a wonderful candidate, such a giving orchid. And you also want to see where does she start? What is the behavior of her rhizome? And that's why I was picking away at the moss here, because you can see my orchid starts here at the back and then leads off into two directions with multiple directions from those directions of the rhizome. So we've got a great, great example. We've got definitely more than three pseudobulbs and we have several new growths on whichever side of the division that we're going to cut the orchid. My plan is to cut her right here at the end of the rhizome where she first starts to branch off. And being in Lekka and self-watering, I can't just take my secateurs and go chomp, chomp, chomp. I have to literally dig in to the rhizome to get there then separate her with all the roots <laughs> entangled. Such fun. <laughs> but I want to show you how I go about it, even though there will be carnage on the root system in the middle. What I'm going to do though is protect the outer perimeter. Ideally also you want to have new roots starting when you enter a project like this so that you have a backup plan. The orchid doesn't really notice that anything <laughs> untoward has happened to her at the back end. <laughs> if you don't have new roots starting, I would highly recommend to stay away from a project like this. If you know your orchid is about to start new roots because you have observed her growth habit in the past years and you know that, well, at this and this stage, she will start growing new roots within a week or two weeks, go for it because then you know your orchid and she will still not miss a beat and not absorb too much energy from the back structures. Now, the beauty about this orchid is that she still has her oldest pseudobulbs intact from back when I got her in 2018. That is super helpful as well. And we're gonna try and keep them intact. Okay, so my plan is to cut her here and then I have a clear path all the way through but we need to get all these roots separated as well. I'm gonna change the camera angle. Let's go. <laughs> Dear Prostechia, behave. The first thing though is her pot is broken. <laughs> Seems to be the story of my life in the past two years. Hakuna Matata, I think I have the right inner pot for her so that I can use the mask again. I have had her soaking in Bactophil. Sometimes I do calcium and magnesium. But in this case, I've got her in back to fill because this is a product I've been using this season quite a lot. And I want to see how the orchid responds with root production. Possibly not ideal with this orchid because she is a vigorous root grower. Oh, goody. The pot is not rock hard. That means I probably won't need to get my hammer out, which I always kind of cringe because hammer, lecker, roots. <laughs> That normally spells crushing the roots at the same time. But let's get her out and see if she'll come willingly. I mean, there is give in the pot, but I'll be back seeing as this is not about how to get your orchid out of a pot. Oh well, meanwhile, as I'm saying that, here she is. Ah, come here, you beauty. Where are you snagging? On a microfiber? Okay, there we go. Awesome. 
So we still have some intact roots from when we potted her up last. What a generous orchid. We have wonderful roots out on the outer perimeter. The new growths have not started their new roots yet, but they will very, very shortly because look here is a new growth with new roots starting. Our timing is perfect. This is what you want to see. Even though you're going to be dividing it and one division hasn't got new roots starting, it's one and the same orchid, so the others won't be far away to start their own new roots. Now, in this instance, I'm going to change the camera angle one more time. Because looky here, this is exactly where we want to go. We're going to protect everything on the outside and we're going to fiddle around in the middle. And we're going to get as much off in the middle as possible, sever the roots so that we can get to the rhizome, even if we take off viable roots. Don't worry about it. Your backup plan is well underway. Of course, if you have such a gorgeous root as this one right here, I wonder if we can maintain that. <laughs> At least we can try. Nah, the root tip was already kinked. Quel dommage. Anyway, we're sticking with the program here. Ah, we got dead roots in the middle. Ooh, this is going to be a fabulous cleanup. But you see, if you go through the middle, if you've already established your plan of where you want to divide the orchid from the offset, your project becomes that much easier. Usually you've got dead roots in the middle of the orchid anyway, at the back end of the orchid, whichever type of genus you're tackling. The back end usually has dead roots anyway. You're not doing any damage and you're not even touching the outer perimeter. So you can really go for it with confidence and bravado. So I have been doing a little bit of excavating here and during my archeological process, <laughs> I have discovered a little bit of mold, nothing that a little hydrogen peroxide can't take care of, which we will spray on straight away because we've still got some work to do and we'll let that take care of the mold. And I am now removing all of the ceramics as well that had the mold on it. There's no need for ceramics anymore because now I am separating my LECA sizes. I don't use hydrogen peroxide on every repot because if there's no snails or if I don't encounter any mold, there is no point to do that, in my opinion. I'd rather use it when absolutely necessary. But yes, this is wonderful to get in here and just ooh, clean it out, you know? like the last meat of your Thanksgiving turkey that is still on the carcass and you're like, oh, plenty to pick on. <laughs> That's where you'll find me after Thanksgiving in the morning with the carcass. Good morning. Oh, you wanted some turkey meat sandwiches for your lunch today? I'm sorry. I just cleaned your carcass out. I love it. But yeah, when you're dividing an orchid, even if you're growing in organic media, it's best to go really in get to the bottom of it, <laughs> pun intended, and clean it out properly. The orchid is getting a rejuvenation, a fresh start, and we might as well go all in. Well, with organic media, you can take some strong secateurs and you've got a great advantage. I highly recommend that if you're tackling a project like this, that you take your time and really get in there, get it all out. Would you please do me a solid and like this video? Thank you. How about, <laughs> don't want to get greedy here, how about subscribing? If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate that. I do have a statistic that I'm watching. I'm trying to get my viewership to subscribe. I have a very high percentage of viewership that are not subscribed to my channel. Just wondering what it's going to take to get your vote of confidence. So I would appreciate it if you would subscribe if you have not already done so. Also, if you think you are subscribed to my channel, may I also ask you just to double check because I'm seeing it with my own subscription feed that I'm being unsubscribed from channels that I have been subscribed to for years. So I don't understand why YouTube does that, but would you just double check and see that you're still subscribed and if you see that, oh my goodness, I'm actually not resubscribed, that would be awesome. Thank you so, so much. And hey, <clears throat> while you're at it. You think somebody could benefit from this video? Go ahead. YouTube loves that hat trick and share away. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so far so good. What we're gonna do now is blast out the center with some nice clear water because what I want to show you from above is the stage at which I recommend you get to before you divide. Besides that, it also keeps the roots nice and hydrated if you're working in an environment that is pretty breezy, where I'm at it is at the moment, as well as warm, which it still is where I'm at at the moment. Now you see I haven't gone all the way through to the end and there's a reason for that. Remember the outer perimeter of the root system? I haven't even touched that. But now we can play peekaboo through that mass of roots. That's where we want to get to because then we can see what we still need to remove before we actually divide. And we divide once we've pretty much got a clear path, cut the roots that are keeping the pieces together before we even cut the rhizome because we don't want to rip any new roots that may be entangled in there. You see what we've got going on here? <laughs> This is wonderful. She's coming loosey-goosey. So we got Lekka here, not anymore. Lekka here, not anymore. We can leave that bit. We're just clearing the path for the snips. Doing it this way will also avoid any unnecessary injury to your carpal tunnel, which I struggle with. We may not even need to. Yeah, right in the front, but I was thinking we may not even need to cut her because she's come loose on the rhizome all by herself, which is actually ideal. But you see now we've got the front network here. So we are going to take the roots that are holding the pieces together and just cut them. And yes, there are viable roots in there, but remember the new root growth, especially from a growth like this and a new growth like down here, it's on the way, it'll do a great job replacing it. What I do want to do and recommend that you do though is be a bit more diligent at the front because now we're on the outer perimeter. So unless your project lasts very, very long, you're running short of time or you're already getting a little bit fed up, sometimes that can happen as well. You can't step back and take a break. It needs to be done straight away. Then you can cut straight through, hot your two divisions up and you're good to go. But for the time being, I'm still good on schedule. So I'm just going to see how much I can fiddle around here and see if how much I can save and carry over with me into the next pot. I'm already noticing that I went with very small lecker the second time around. I started with ceramis and a mixed bag of lecker, large and small. This orchid is extremely thirsty. So instead of adding more ceramis, I separated lecker out and went with small lecker. And I shall potter up with small lecker again. So this is just remnants, this large lecker. These are just remnants from the first ever repot. Isn't this awesome? Look at this. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby is all grown up and divided, ready to live on their own. So amazing. Now, there's still a lot of work to be done, but first I'm gonna put this piece with not that much work to be done into that back to fill water that I was soaking them in prior. And I'm going to tackle this piece back here because I really want this out. All this, this is all dead. This is so much fun. I can't tell you how satisfying it is. Well, maybe you're like me. You've done something like this before and you're like, yes, I love this too. You like seeing when an orchid is super duper cleaned up, gets a nice Figaro haircut. Molto bene. Woohoo! We're coming to the end of our dig here. <laughs> Just a few little stragglers. They're not here nor there, but you know, as I mentioned, I've got time today. I'm having a good time and I hope that you're enjoying the video as well. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, something I didn't cover, something you would like to have more details on. I have another video where I explained so many different examples. I can link that in the description if you are interested to see some other varieties, some other options. Not where I actually divided the orchid, I just theoretically talked you through it. And of course, I'm going to link my Dendrobium Hibiki video into the description because you're probably thinking, yikes! How is this gonna work? How is this good for the orchid? Well, my Dendrobium hibiki was divided exactly the same way and she's currently blooming like a crazy orchid. 
which is exactly what we want. She was divided in October of 2022, and at the point of filming this video, it is August of 2023, and Hibiki didn't even flinch. Let's get the other piece. I'm gonna soak this one also in that Bactafil that is still in the mask. I'll bring the other piece. Let's check it out, seeing as it is a little bit smaller. We may lose this growth, but that is normal. Not because of what we've just done, it's just that when I see the bracts at the bottom go dark so quickly, yeah, this, this growth could fail, but I'm not gonna touch it unless it pops off on its own. But as a division here, we have wonderful bulbs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a new growth that is growing roots. Perfect. This orchid here is going to be a stunner within two years. That is how vigorous they are. And if I were a gambling woman, which I am not, if I were a gambling woman, I would say she's going to bloom in 2024. And she's not even going to feel any different. Au contraire, this is probably going to get her really angry and she'll be even more vigorous. <laughs> which is exactly what we want out of our orchids. Ooh, we need more hydrogen peroxide down here. Echo. Normally I like to spray the rhizome down a little bit, but I'm a bit wary of that growth in the back. Maybe we would lose it if I wet it down even more. So no spraying of the rhizome, no rinsing here at all seeing as we're going to be potting both pieces up right now into their separate pots. So happy that you're still with me. Thank you so much for your time. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? We're going to pot one up together and I will get back with you when they are both potted up. But what do you say to this, huh? You would think at the beginning we're going to do a lot of damage, risk a lot of roots, but Look at this spread. Both have enough roots to move into their new pots and carry on growing as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> so let me get one piece out of the way. Let's start with a little one. Standard procedure, water first. Now, if you're not sure what you want to do with your orchid, if it's gonna stick in the pot, if it's not gonna jiggle around so much, if you would like to avoid that, then always put a support in for eventualities and I'm not going to do that in this case I've got plenty of roots and she's going bang smack into the middle because if we made this little division angry enough we already have a new growth coming out the other side maybe a new growth will also start from one of the oldest ever pseudobulbs so in the middle she goes meaning for the next two or three years she won't need to be repotted which is exactly what we want and I'm gonna start at the back because there are no roots there and let my leka just fall into place. Jiggle and raise, jiggle and raise. <laughs> oh, so happy. See, she's solid in the pot. Hakuna Matata. Just fresh RO water. Prior to the repot, she had all the goodies she needed leading up to this. Now, I'm gonna finish my next one and I'll be back. Mmm, we love the sound of the gargling. That means that there is plenty of space in the lecker, lots of oxygen exchange in the pot. Perfect. Ooh, more gorgeous gargling, bubbling, yum. Love that sound. Don't they look fabulous, if I may say so myself? <laughs> I love it. Okay. They do have brown tips on their leaves, but those are the leaves from 2022 when I didn't have enough humidity. The growths of this year in 2023, no drying leaf tips yet. <laughs> that can change at any time because my humidity has suddenly dropped back to what it normally is, 16%. Yippee-i-yay. But anyway, for now, I am enjoying the green foliage. I am enjoying that I got in there. I'm enjoying the fact that they are separated and both of them can now just carry on. Both of them are potted in the middle, seeing as they've got growth coming out from every which way. And also, if this is only one lead for now, trust me, next year it won't be, hence in the middle. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful in some way. And even if you knew everything that I was talking about and you still watch the video to the end, thank you so, so much for your support. I appreciate it. And just one more thing I want to address. I want to wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Woohoo. <laughs>